This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beefy neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it's not Tuesday. And if you're in the podcatcher, yeah, we're a day late. Uh, we had another podcast project that uh, un- unfortunately have bumped us, I guess, <laughs> for the night. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can work this out so this doesn't happen too often. Or maybe we need to have a new night. Who knows? Either way, awesome cast is going to keep coming to you uh here and a uh, wednesday night this week uh with me in studio it's katie it's the dudders hi hey she's with us oh yeah, sounds a little yeah there you are oh, look, I'm very bright. Uh. <laughs> yeah it's still sunny out it's not it's not horrible uh how you doing good how is strip life for you good i like strip life <laughs> Lots of options for strip life. Everybody knows that you guys are in the strip now. Yes, it's so nice. Yeah, One I, less secret. I saw, I saw a city paper article pop up in my feed today. It was like, hey, did you know Scarehouse is in the strip now? Hey, surprise. Yeah, they're doing things. They're eating all the food in the strip. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just like just it, it like you said you were doing like like business for a scare house and I'll just see like all this like food porn pictures on your Instagram. Yeah, it's so sad. <laughs> it's, There's yeah. so many places that oh, eat delicious man. food. I was like, oh, you're doing reconnaissance. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Making friends. Oh, it's a good place to be. Good place to be. I got to hang out at the uh, Carnegie. Carnegie? Carnegie. We say Carnegie here. It's, Mad Mike's usually mad, mad at me when I say it that way. Um, music Library Hall uh, nice. with uh, Dalit Down, the new podcast project. We kind of did a dress rehearsal kind of thing last night. So hoping to have some details on that coming up soon. Uh, I would say probably earmark September 17th if you want to hear more. And also that's another night that will probably be bumping the awesome cast to be awesome. Plus I'm going on vacation in, in September for, for once. Um, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do about that. So... Uh, so stay tuned because we'll figure it out. I guess I have like less than two weeks to figure out that first one. Anyways, this is the awesome cast. And for the moment, we're coming at you here on Facebook live and some other platforms. But again, if uh, you're catching us on any of those platforms or afterwards, uh, please pop over to the Facebook live. Typically when I'm not screwing up my, uh, my, my, my entire September schedule, uh, we're here on Tuesdays at 7 PM Eastern time on the Facebook live. And if you want to, catch up with us later and continue the conversation uh use the hashtag ac 460 and uh hit us at awesome cast on the twitter please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app watch video versions on youtube and facebook for this episode and uh of course uh hit us up uh, awesome cast on the twitter like i said awesome cast on the facebook a great awesome cast group where you guys are talking about stories throughout the week we got a few uh, i really should, should have gotten partner on dave bonner on the show uh this week because he, he has a lot of stories he submitted <laughs> so, just like well we should just go to the source uh but unfortunately i didn't read i was I, re- I was like oh no no i don't know like like an hour before i'm like i can't give him that that much lead time uh but also check out our streaming partners rivers edge pgh.com 405 media.com and check out their listings on there for when we are streaming uh rebroadcasting this show uh also if you want to be part of a studio audience here or if you're interested in advertising with our show please hit up producer missy at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com she is not in the house it's just katie and i it's us no producer (laughs) that means star wars and butts and cats butts and cats butts and cats (laughs) And of course, if you guys want to support Butts and Cats, you can go to patreon.com slash awesomecast. Like our good friends over there who are supporting the show, uh, putting their dollar where their podcast is. Uh, our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level, we try to give a little bit extra conversation that uh, they get exclusively Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen. And at the Fan of the Show $1 level, Michael Fedor, their longest running Patreon supporter. Also, John Carmen, I still I still disagree with you because I just re-heard, re-listened to the beginning of last week's show uh he-man holds up 
I'm going with oh, He-Man no. holds up. Now the rest of the filmation gets a little weird, but um, like if you just look at He-Man and then you start watching the other filmation and realize how much they borrow over, yeah, then it gets a little weird. But um, but I think He-Man more or less holds up as far as 80s cartoons go. Uh, support uh, and also argue with me about the how uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and other 80s cartoons at patreon.com slash awesomecast. So, speaking of throwbacks, Katie, so ah. our awesome, this is going to be the weirdest awesome things of the week that we've had in a while. Uh, so We're excited. Let's talk about the 90s. 90s. Okay, so this is a great article on Mashable. This is actually really funny because we were just discussing some horrible tech uh, just yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we were talking about, I was in a conversation about the pagers. And remember, there was a point when you had a pager. If you paid it a certain level. Did you have a, did you have a pager? No, I did not. Okay. I, I had friends that had pagers. Okay. But you used to be able to call in and somebody would mm -hmm. actually physically type out the message and send it to the pager. Wait, that's how that worked? Yes. It was hey, wait, wait, you I, I thought you just like like text it to a thing and then it came through. Do you think that technology exists? I I didn't really Okay, I didn't I I you see it in the things and people yeah. get a page and, and whatever. Yeah. So oh. I think it was totally from what I knew, I mean I I have not researched this in the last twenty years. We, we weren't old enough to to have pagers. Mm -hmm. I like the if you if you had pagers in high school, you were probably a drug dealer, right? <laughs> I had a friend who was older than me that had one, but that okay. was. And then in college, I had a friend, another friend that had one, but that was the only two contacts mm -hmm. I've ever had with pagers. Yeah, but we were talking about that because we used to just call in and make them type out the most ridiculous things for funsies. <laughs> So uh, Mashable has this fun article about get over your 90s tech nostalgia. Essentially, 90s technology just sucked. <laughs> and it's it's really fun to read. I mean, if if you had 90s technology, it was not the best. I mean, mm. it was great for then. Yeah. But they talk about how like video games to get them to work. You're blowing cartridges, flipping them upside down and how horrible like the N64 controller was. Do you remember they went through how many different controllers you could buy and then you bought the extra controllers and they just got bigger and boxier or like awkward? Were you grabbing the third party ones or something? Oh, yeah. Because that got, they did get weird. Those yeah. ones, they, the Mad Cats were delightful though. They had a rubber grip on them. It just felt right. We had, I forget who made it, but it was about this big and it had a joystick and two buttons and it was um, IR. Mm -hmm. So it was cordless. Okay. Yeah, it was a super futuristic. If you, I mean, <laughs> for then, <laughs> super cool. So we didn't have cords at some points connecting us to things. And talking about how much of a waste of time it was rewinding tapes. Yep. How horrible headphones were because they were incredibly uncomfortable because the foam and just everything hurt and it squeezed your ears and it caused pain and then it sounded awful. Um, then it talked about Walkmans and CD players, how bad they were and how we had to deal with, uh, you only got like 60 minutes of music on a cassette. Then you had to flip it over and mm -hmm. then you had to record whatever you wanted to listen to anyways. Yep. Yeah. But, and so that, that was really funny. So on video games, like you said, I, I talked about about uh, well, yeah, a month or so ago about the PlayStation classic, man, those games do not hold up. You know, realizing like, I, I, I forgot the PlayStation came out in 1996. <laughs> okay. Wow. So there's a little bit of context to that. Cause I yeah. remember like that came out and that's when like the best super Nintendo games are coming out, like Donkey Kong country, which looked amazing. Right. With their kind of faux 3d graphics and, 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 and those, you know, that they were, they were kind of bumping things up a little bit there. But man, like going back and playing like, you know, Battle Arena to Shinden, Tekken 3, uh, I, I played the original test, Twisted Metal and I'm just like, it's just a bunch of pixels th getting thrown at you at this point, right? Yes. It, 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 it's real rough, but it was like, but that was cutting edge then. It was just like, well, it looks better than Mario right now, right? <laughs> so it's, it's crazy looking back at that. It, it, the, the late 90s are probably the least hold up a bowl era in video games right oh gosh yeah <laughs> just like tech as a whole i mean if you, once you start looking at this stuff and you're like oh my gosh like the floppy disks mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the rigid floppy disks look at cd-roms yeah did you have any cd-rom games with full motion video oh yeah and then you're feature. like hold on let me switch out this disc yeah. hold on let me put this other disc yeah, in so yeah. i can continue and, my game and it was these these like horribly acted films you know in between phantasmagoria i remember wing commander uh, and, and it was just like, and all the video was like 320 by 240, <laughs> something ridiculous like that, right? Like, oh, like yeah. everybody was going crazy about Night Trap, but go watch Night Trap now, you know, on a Sega CD. <laughs> it's so bad. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about cameras. Cameras. Do you remember video cameras when you had like a suitcase? You look like some sort of mobster. Oh, when you would, like, my grandfather like, had those for mm -hmm. all of my uh, band, you know, mm -hmm. band 
recitals and 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 choir and everything. Oh yeah, had that on his shoulder the whole time. Yep. <laughs> so, like uh, it, yeah. It, yeah, it it was it was an endeavor to 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 get one of those. <laughs> Do we? I didn't look in the doc. Are we going to talk about certain video games coming back? Mm-hmm. Mm, is that later in the doc? I don't know. Oh, we, we talking about Aladdin? And I think Lion King coming what? to the Switch. No, yeah. like Speaking... the original like Sega ones. Yeah, but fancified. Nice. I believe it is. Like no, but um, yeah, Lion King, and yeah, Lion King and something else are coming to Switch. Lion King and Aladdin. Yes, that's it. Being remastered, so they're gonna be beautiful. Nice. Well, I remember um, uh, Aladdin was always really impressive because it was one of the first games where like yeah, we took the cells from like the cartoon. And, you know, kind of like how that Donkey Kong, you know, hey, we, we like made these 3D characters, but they're actually sprites, but they look really cool. Um, and then, you know, hey, these are like animation, like real animation. It was like the smoothest looking game at, at the time, I think. Right. Yeah. So it was they were pretty nice games. It still holds up. Oh, yeah. I still like throwing that one in every once in a while. So no, that's worthwhile. That's worthwhile. If they're making like a, you know, less pixely version of it. Right. Yeah. It looks like it's coming to Xbox, Switch and PlayStation. They announced it at... Um, one of the GameStop managers' conferences Ooh, mm. coming in fall. Mm. Awesome. Well, hey, it, <laughs> the '90s may not have held up, but uh, you know what? So, I uh, we 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 you know we I've been watching a lot of movies lately. I don't know if you noticed on my Facebook lately, <laughs> but uh, it, it, we've been using a lot of our uh, A list uh, AMC A list in the last week. As uh, I was working a conference, I was just like, I got to do, I just got to do something online, and we just like found whatever movie was playing that night right so we spent a lot of time in the waterfront so we go grab i don't know you know so we got we grabbed something for dinner or something fast food and it was like hey let's go sit by the river so i pulled over by the river i'm sitting there in these bushes and i got a little bit of a view and all of a sudden i see this like form through the bushes and i'm just like what is that what's walking along you know like somebody walking their dog no it's not a dog wait is that a horse wait what is that um, and then what I end up finding are goats and a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that these are things that are happening, but I just didn't expect them like right there, uh, uh you know, it, it, then and there. And so apparently along the river, uh, in the waterfront, uh, it, they, they got, uh, some goatscape going on. Uh, you know, it, it, the goats are of course used to kind of, uh, beat back a lot of the invasive species, of weeds and everything and something like that. Uh, it's Allegheny Ghostscape is a company because they had a little one. They have an electrified fence. Don't lick it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, they had you know some facts about the goats and and, and information. Uh, but you can find out more at alleghenygoatscape.org. Uh, this is you know again, especially with a lot of the hillsides here in the Pittsburgh area, Allegheny County. Um, these guys are really helpful to kind of clear a lot of those out. Look at that happy goat. Aww. Look at that happy goat. Fantastic. Um, but oh, <laughs> uh, it's a, it's it's pretty cool. I I love that it. it's just like like a, a a spectator sport at this point too <laughs> uh, with the, some of these images. But um, but no, it was it was kind of a nice little surprise, you know, to see like hey, you know, there's a petting zoo over there, but don't. Don't pet them. Um, but uh, uh, go check that out. AlleghenyGoatscape.org if you want to find out more information uh, about what they're doing. And and if you can, because I know you can rent goats. Mm-hmm. But it's we, we looked at it one time. It was it was like, we're like, you know, maybe we can just clear our hillside with this, right? And, uh, it, you know, you got to rent so many goats and a donkey. Because a donkey controls the goats, mm-hmm. right? Like the, 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 they're, they're like a herding animal for them or something. So, because I felt bad because the goat or the donkey went under the, the, the little tent they had for them and then they all went away and I'm like, oh, that's a sad, lonely donkey. Sad <laughs> but donkey. I guess that's it hurting or something. So anyways, so goats in the 90s. <laughs> 90s. <laughs> 90s goats. Uh, but anyways, I want to give a shout to, uh, we would like to give a little neighborhood focus, of course, here in the Beachview area. So this is where we hang our, our digital hats here. Uh, for the studio and my personal hat because my my house is three blocks away and one of the lifesavers is our friends at muddy club Co- muddy cup coffee house they're right down the street from us right the block down if you're in here for i know there's a few people that come in here for shows and events uh here at sorgatron media but of course uh, you know we've all been there working the day away and that mid-afternoon slump hits i had a little bit of that today uh poor uh, uh you know 
pour some uh, a, a good fresh brewed coffee, mocha, or latte at Muddy Cup. If you're not in the Beachview area, go check out uh, other convenient locations in Dormont and Bellevue. I've been to two of the three locations. I've never been to the Dormont one, um, but uh, I'm not usually walking through uh, for that. But uh, go check them out. Uh, look up Muddy Cup Coffee House. Uh, on the internets and uh, you'll find them and find that location and stop in and tell them the awesome cast sent you and we were talking about them on this show all right speaking of old video games from the 90s that's basically where chachi lives right now katie <laughs> yes <laughs> in his world of games <laughs> it is world i was loving the titles that were popping up in my feed this week so uh, uh once again our buddy chachi is over at the and he's trying to sort through a thousand one games to play before you die a book that was released that he's been like obsessed with over the last several years he's in super nintendo world right now and uh he's played uh uh this was a launch title pilot wings i don't remember playing much pilot wings He's got Zombies Ate My Neighbors. That's a classic. Oh, that's a good one. That's, <laughs> I figured that'd be one you'd be into. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Kart, the original Breath of Fire 2. Wow, he's going back for that one. I, I've never played a Breath of Fire. Or a- Axley? Axley? I don't know. I don't know which one this one is. But <laughs> uh, but he's he's rolling back there. Uh, Out of This World, Another World was another one, Actor Razor. So he's in that, that early Super Nintendo. Hey, Super Nintendo still holds up as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Just that 3D bit gets a little mm-hmm. weird. So go check out what he's doing at GameJourney.com as we check in with him uh, this week. Uh, so... Uh, Dave Ponder, he submitted a few things in a, a, a Tiny Shutter podcast, as well as uh, Doug Dirt of Yin's Love Barbecue. Uh, there are there are there are MVPs because I know I saw them in the chat room as well. But uh, and also, what's up, Brandon in the KC? I saw you popping in there on the Facebooks. So Ponder threw out that uh, uh, this could be useful to some people. Uh, Duolingo adds Latin to its language list. And then he drops some Latin in there. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Uh, so the Duolingo, of course, is a local company here in Pittsburgh, and they're um, they uh, uh, do a lot of language learning. Uh, but we had actually somebody from there on the Awesome Chat program uh, talking about what they're doing. So it's not, Latin's like we're talking about the dead language Latin, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, is it? Is it dead, dead Latin? Is it dead, dead Latin? Because I mean, is there is there new Latin? Is the basis of yeah? Is it new Latin or old Latin? Like what what Latin? What regional regional Latin is this? So, but uh, if you want to learn Latin, you can go for it. And I mean, it's a basis for a lot of our language. So it's kind of a fun thing to get into. Also, uh, Dave Potter also shared uh, kind of more aligned with uh, his podcast things this was uh what was this comment on this one hold on let me pop this over here uh if you're in camp android and want an apple watch here's your chance to get a watch that at least looks like one <laughs> so if there you, you go if you want to fake your apple watchness um who who am i who am i i'm not good with my chinese uh names uh wa wami let's go wami because i think huawei something else right uh, but they put the Apple Watch Series 4 through the photocopier in China, it says. And yeah, they look pretty much like an Apple Watch. Uh, and, I, you know, obviously probably, you know, I don't even know if they're they're officially Android Watch. Because there's a lot of them that will, that there's a lot of watches that'll interface. You know, kind of like the Pebble did, how it wasn't like a, a true, um, it's the Amazfit GTS, if you want to look that up. Ooh. Yes, so... Go check that out. The H U A M I is the company. I won't uh, destroy that anymore for any Chinese listeners out there. I'm sure there's plenty of you. <laughs> oh, and Podner says it's classic Latin. The dead, dead. Oh, the dead, dead classic Latin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> thanks for thanks for uh, uh, narrowing that down for us. Um, oh, I <laughs> uh, see you're you're stuck there under awesome cast in the chat. I figured out how to. Don't ask. I got around. I think I can actually be me. Okay. I'm me. Facebook being. Awesome. <laughs> yes, I just F- said I'm Facebook. me. Facebook being Facebook. Um, Durda shared a one. Um, <laughs> so he, this was this was oh like his comment on this oh like Facebook doesn't already have most of this info and now and now they need another app to roll out. I guess you can never have too many wait apps for Katie to, uh, to check in while eating chacos so many tacos <laughs> so this is instagram's latest uh battle with uh, snapchat it's called threads mm-hmm. it's a messaging app and apparently your your messaging and location gets shared with your closest friends 
I have not messed with this. I don't. Is this even rolled out to the coast friends here in America? I think it was more like certain countries were doing it so far. Maybe, yeah. So it, it, it's kind of the micro. I guess this is your Facebook. The face or future of Facebook is privacy by sharing all your information, but only with the closest friends. Yeah, that makes sense. Totally, it's it, great. You know, do you want to lowjack your friends? Um, so there were, I mean, we've had uh, another standalone message app called direct, you know, that this article reminds me of over, uh, over on the verge. Uh, so this is, I'm always weary with Facebook spin out apps like this. <laughs> we were just, I was just having a conversation with you jag off in here the other day about, uh, he was trying to get, um, uh, Facebook live to work, um, horizontally with the pages app. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, don't use that. They never keep up on it. Nope. Go get through it through your main app and you'll be able to do X, Y, and Z, right? So he's like, he's like, I thought I was cool. I was using the Pages app. He's <laughs> so like, nope. No. Nope. No, there's a very small window, like small amount of things that I will use right. the Pages app for. I mean, there's certain things that you have to. Mm-hmm, unfortunately. I can't tell you what they are right now, but it's like you run into that block and like, oh, I should go to Pages and do this. Yeah. Well so. then, and then they're going to force us into Creator, and that's a whole other can of worms that makes me very unhappy. A whole other platform, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. live in that yet. But mm-hmm. um, so I, I don't know. It seems like they're they're throwing a lot at the wall here uh, between that direct app that they had before, between Threads. There's been other kind of like, hey, here's a camera app for Facebook, you know, uh, and and it doesn't feel like they keep up with the core Facebook, and then no. I don't think any of them have caught on, to be honest. I don't mm-hmm. think anything has caught on except for Messenger because it was a core feature. Mm-hmm. And Instagram because they didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> like, they bought an audience, right? Ta-da! So, um, I don't know. Do you see any... Uh, this, I, this this is just another mess. This is just another info funnel for them, basically, yeah, right? Yeah, I feel like it. Like, I, I can't think of a reason I would use this. Like, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to use it. I don't know. I'm wondering if more people are using these random messenger apps because they're trying to keep conversations away from being seen in normal conversation land. Mm -hmm. Like if, if, if I'm, I I just had a conversation with somebody about this today. So it's not like it's the top of mind, but we were talking, you know, essentially finding out that someone's been communicating on like Instagram messenger Mm -hmm. with other people that they shouldn't be communicating with, but because they, you don't check there. Mm-hmm. You look for the text, you look yeah. for the, this and, and like, this seems like, I don't know, like maybe, maybe that's a, a niche audience we are not thinking about are the people who want to keep these conversations all sorts of public or private. <laughs> we have friends. <laughs> drive, <laughs> drive by friending. Yeah, I like friends. <laughs> but um, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I'm wondering if that's something we're not even thinking about, about the conversations you want to keep away from mm-hmm. other people, not necessarily significant others, but just... Well, this app is also like it says it's automatically sharing your your you know your data and your mm-hmm. location and everything. And I think about how I use uh, Find My Friends to basically lowjack my family. Yeah. Um. You know, my mom's on there, so I can always see what's going on with her, especially since there was a health scare recently. So it is like we literally like figured out which hospital she was because of her phone. Yeah. Like that was like like we're like hey we're coming to visit you and she's like I never told you what hospital I was in. I was like no that's okay I figured it out even if you're out which side of the hospital because I was really confused. Um. You know things like that, like so. So I could see, I could see like that part of us that like we're always in that one, you know, messaging group together. Mm-hmm. You know, sharing whatever. Like in and and this could bring in the green bubbles. We don't include to that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <they're>... green bubbles. <laughs> so I was listening to some some of the like people. There was this article this week. Uh, one of the podcasts was I was talking about about how there was like this bullying thing that kind of happens because you ostracize the person that's the green bubble. Because you want to have the messaging, like, be, you know, because of that one green bubble in your group, you can't use your, like, stickers or whatever that you want to use in iChat, you know. Uh, it- <laughs> you should, it's so much fun. If you have a green bubble in your conversation group, it is really fun to react to another message. You know how when you, you hold the iMessage down and it's mm-hmm. like the laugh and the haha, the exclamation point. Mm-hmm. Do that. Your friend in the group with the green bubble will get a weird like... Sorg laughed at this. <laughs> See, I've seen that before uh-huh. too. Like, I think, I think some of that. I think with the Apple Watch, it actually comes up as a text. That's so, awesome. so that's not just the Android people, right? It's not mm-hmm. just you, green bubblers. Out you there. green bubblers. You green bubblers. Jeez. Uh, but, it, but at least you can do that, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I think it's become a little more open, hasn't it? That mm-hmm. I can throw app stuff in there, at least my gifts and stuff. But. Oh geez. Um, well, I think I don't know. Like it's weird because, like for example, with me and Snapchat, I used to be able used to be able to see where I was on Snapchat on the map. 
Um, even for, I, I had a close friend group that were like, oh yeah, if they could see me where, where I was at and stuff, it was no big deal. But then we started doing secret things with Scarehouse and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I got to remove this. Like, and it's so many things I have to think about now, mm-hmm. like making sure you're not checking in accidentally or making sure that people can't see where I'm located. And oh. it's weird. Yeah. Cause you have all these apps now sharing your location all the time. So is that where like you kind of like, Hey, let's pull it out of Facebook messages. Let's put it in a Slack or a riot or something yeah, like that kind there. of separation happens. Like we're seeing that, you know, they just moved some stuff with work hard from like slack to riot and now mm-hmm. and that was like how we were communicating during this conference we uh last week that uh we doing the abstractions conference uh we were doing video um, on content capture mm-hmm. for capture for them and uh that was that was like it and it's not in some other channel uh, you know where you know somebody can pick up on that yeah because so. wasn't it like we were just i don't know if we talked about it on the show or we we're just talking about it randomly about slack mm-hmm. and how they own a lot of the content that you add yeah did we talk yeah. about that i don't I, 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 it, but, could have yeah <laughs> <laughs> we, we run in that situation where it's like was this a real life conversation and it's a weird and podcast? i'm not I'm, I'm like on the line with it because yeah. i'm not like i don't think i'm doing anything important about enough that i think i'm concerned with that as mm-hmm. a business as my little podcasting network and in t- mostly we're just talking about the podcast on on the slack right now right mm-hmm. but if it becomes like okay this financial company is we're talking with them here and having the conversations like then it kind of then we got to start paying attention right yeah so i mean I, yeah <laughs> it, that's when you do like like work hard this did where like hey we're gonna move over and we're gonna have this thing that's that's federated on our own server right yeah you know like there's there's a grown-up point to that mm-hmm. where you want to bring that inside and also if you're at that size you have the size to support that because i'm not going to support my own internal server right now I'm, I'm just not even up for that right nope. now so um we're likely the internet stays up for our streams <laughs> around here you know is a power out again who knows yeah <laughs> um but uh yeah you know that that kind of situation but it's gonna keep it out and, and also how many people are how many people are concerned about privacy uh dave's in the chat room talking about um all the spinoffs need to die <laughs> i can only see them uh making them to test features I, and that might be a little bit right you know it, that this is their testing board you are all their focus group who that are downloading these things yep. so Thank you, everyone. Remember the day when we just uh, downloaded a new app to check it out? Yeah. Was the last time you've done that? Oh, gosh. Like, especially like a social app like this. <sighs> Maybe Ello. Ello. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that might have been the last one I downloaded to see what it was like. There's a lot of buzz around it. Yeah. This is the Facebook killer. This is the future. Watch yeah. it. Yeah. Like, what? No. And they all became plurk. Yeah. Hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza here. Uh, whenever we do some Tuesday, I didn't bother calling them. I want to confuse them on Wednesday nights when we do this. Uh, but our friends at Slice on Broadway, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they've been supporting us for a good long time, feeding our uh, uh, crew that comes in here during the dinner time for the awesome cast. Uh, and also, uh, please go check them out uh, and visit the location. Tell them the awesome cast sent you. Sorry, I almost went into my Wrestling Mayhem show ad. Um, but hey, you know, actually, there's some of you out there that are not in the Pittsburgh area. And if you have a Broadway avenue that doesn't have a slice on Broadway yet, take a picture of that slice. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll take a picture of that Broadway Avenue, uh, send it to Slice, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, and let them know you want to slice on your Broadway and help them with their expansion. They had only one location when they when we started talking about them here on this podcast, uh, so uh, you're welcome. And uh, go check out our friends at Slice on Broadway. All right, let's see what else we got here. Mario Kart Tour is coming Yay. on September 25th. They teased us for 10 days at the end of May. I played it. Thankfully, I had a lot of traveling, so I spent a lot of time with Mario Kart uh, in the beta test. And uh, they, it kept saying, coming summer, coming summer, coming summer. I think September 25th is officially not summer. <laughs> <laughs> is it the last day of summer? That's when we, not, when no. We flip over? No. no. Uh, so uh, I, I'm looking forward. I know Chachi was in the in the uh, uh, group saying, I hope I don't have to start from scratch because we got pretty far in it. <laughs> we nice. did get pretty far in it. So um, I, I don't think I'll mind. I really think I'll still play the heck out of it like I am Dr. Mario World still. So I'm glad they're they're putting out they're putting out new worlds in Dr. Mario World just in time for me to beat the world before. So like Perfect. So I'm I'm in like the right line with it. Um but I haven't been playing a lot of verses yet, so also on the Nintendo front, uh there there are reviews out of the Switch Lite 
This is the version of the Switch that is the purely portable, you can't hook it up to a TV, put it in the dock kind of thing. It's kind of the replacement for your Nintendo DS. Uh, and the, the line from Engadget is, the, uh, the, the Switch Lite is the cutest console we ever did see. Hmm? Adorbs. <laughs> so there's your super super portable uh in you know playing full games i would be interested it's a little cheaper than the the regular one i'd be interested but i think i want to do too much with it like i want to do multiplayer i want to hook it up to um you know the tv for streaming and everything but it's kind of cool that that's an option that's super cool look how <laughs> tiny and adorbs that might be that is is that your version if you hop into the switch world yeah teeny tiny <laughs> it is really cute so um let's see what else we got here you guys you got another story on here katie oh what do you want to talk about first we got disney to talk about we got star wars to talk you gotta, about you gotta be excited about some of the star wars stuff coming up it, oh yeah it was D- disney palooza this week oh my gosh did you see the actual footage from the ride the um galaxy's mm, edge ride no omg um there are ad ads they shoot you of course there i are. was freaking screaming like it was a, like i mean like not even kind of it was like look at this and i'm like look at it and there was pewing and, and they chase you and then yeah it was great i was super excited yeah so i'm really i'm that was that was my one lovely thing so so with that so there was a little bit of park announcements right mm-hmm. uh there was that and then there's um and i think i think galaxy edge is still kind of rolling out a bit right mm-hmm. and uh, they've been super focused on that and then well i didn't i didn't realize until too late that disneyland also got a galaxy's edge mm-hmm. And I go to California. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to have to figure out getting a day down there. Uh, that might be easier than my Florida trip. Um, but uh, so, so they did announce there's going to, they're going to start a, Dis- um, our bar- a- Avengers-, blah, blah. Avengers Campus is mm-hmm. going to be the Marvel world. And they've already announced Spider-Man and Black Panther rides. That's so cool. So yeah. this is happening. <laughs> so I don't, I have less reason to go to Universal Studios. Yeah. <laughs> And they're just opening their their new campus by the convention center down there. Oh, Universal. really? So yeah. So what? It, it, yeah. So what is that supposed to include? I know uh, you guys you guys stay in the loop on this a little bit more. Uh sometimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Scott stays in the loop. Yeah. On this. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, they would. Uh, not to look it up. I can't remember but things they, and stuff. They got to be starting to cycle out the Marvel rides here sooner or later, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I got to imagine those deals are pop, are are going out if uh, you know they're getting those there. Does anybody do DC rides? Is Six Flags still? I guess Six Flags is still, they still have yeah a thing. I, yeah, we don't have our Six Flags anymore mm-hmm. over in Ohio, but it, it is still around. I guess so. You can get your Batman roller coasters and stuff. So <laughs> I'm just googling Universal Studios and latest news, and it's there's a story about measles. <laughs> Oh no! Somebody, somebody with measles went to Disneyland and Universal. Oh no! <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah oh, that's so scary oh yeah. that's gonna scare the crap out of me when i start traveling next year uh so oh, yeah and super nintendo world that's the other thing super nintendo world is it oh that's at universal studios yeah, right? that's, yeah. that's a thing yeah. all right there we they, go well, that's when i think i'm out they pull me back in <laughs> um speaking of the parks this was a here's your tech angle for for disney um if this opens appropriately My there word. it is uh so disney parks announced disney genie which is a super app that will plan your trip there are people who make a living planning disney trips for really? other people yeah and like the, their specific job and the genie's gonna take it away from i them. know it's so mean look at that look so at the genie. Uh, I mean, they're already, you know, we've, they're fast pass um, armbands and everything. And like their Disney bucks armbands, like, you know, they're, they're pretty big with their RFID situation down there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if anybody is using, you know, the old term with, with Apple using technology to be magical, it's Disney, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you got a smaller base that you need to serve, you know, with a product. Uh, you know, whatever your park attendee number is, still still better than like anything Apple would put out, right? So uh, I just want to go and just check out the tech. Oh, I know. You know, in Disney yeah. World. <laughs> oh, and then like, uh, there's, gosh, I'll go back to the Star Wars, the, the hotels with the 48 hour experiences and they give you quests and things. And oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is so going to pull me in just to Disney. And I've never been yet. Oh, geez. Have you ever been to a park down there? Uh, Disney, I was at Walt Disney World when I was senior in high school was the last time I was there. 
So that was a thousand years Jeez. ago. We're not going to do math. That's about the time I was at Cedar Point. Oh, yeah. And I did love that uh, I just finished watching The Boys on Amazon. Um, the one where they're the uh, basically the superheroes are assholes. Oh, uh, yeah. And they sent, spoiler alert, they sent one of the guys to uh, Sandusky. <laughs> <laughs> to be the superhero i said we need a ribbon coming at cedar point <laughs> so uh Perfect. that was a nice little shout out there so uh let's see what else we got here disney plus a lot of uh a lot of announcements for that uh we did uh, you know there was a lot of marvel announcements and maybe i'm i'm super excited about miss marvel and she hulk and and somebody out there is uh, excited about moon knight but uh i think mostly we're excited all encompassed about the, the world according to jeff goldblum yes <laughs> did you see the trailer no, I just read about it, but I didn't see it's it. It's just it's just Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum, um, um, experiencing the world and saying, "Isn't that fascinating?" Mm. Uh, and that's and that that's my pitch. And your so your your show is sold. And done. And done. Uh, we got our first look at it, uh, and uh, you actually had something about Disney Plus. Yeah, we were going to debunk this. Saver? Yeah, there was, um, if you join D23, which is Disney's insider group, even at the free level, I haven't tried this, but this is what I, I, I I'm in a, a group that does a lot of um, stuff with like the, the Galaxy's Edge mm-hmm. and like what's coming out. I, I really enjoyed the group. I think somebody, I think the guy that leads my group is, um, is actually a, somebody who works in the industry, like the tourist industry. So he's actually trying to get you to book trips there but i'm enjoying him telling me what's happening down there so i don't have to go look for it Mm -hmm. but um if you join d23 you're supposed to get a discount for disney plus for three years about 33 percent off is what the deal is yeah so is that do i have to buy all three years now that seems dangerous sounds like a thing yeah oh boy one week only save 23 dollars per year on a three-year disney plus subscription that's 33 percent off the annual annual, annual so it's like it's like 43 dollars for an entire year Mm -hmm. with with that discount Mm -hmm. which actually that's that's actually pretty awesome yeah it's not bad um and so so i i I didn't know that d23 was the fan club site thing Mm -hmm. i thought it was just the event they did because I always heard at D23. Oh, yeah. Right? And I never, like, and you'd see something pop up and like, oh, hey, there's new trailers and da 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 and hey, there's a panel or something, right? Like, I didn't realize, like, this is like a, like a Disney club you could belong to. Or, or I guess I'm, not, I'm like, like, I'm on their movie club or something, right? Mm-hmm. That I get those, those Oh, don't points. even start about those. Remember the Disney movie club where you had oh, to no, buy no, no, a thousand? That. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> no, I had been... flashbacks when you said that. I was like, oh. Okay, not that one, but oh. like, it's like the online re- uh, Disney rewards that I think they're turning into something else. Yes. Um, um, and I've actually gotten like, like you'll say, "Hey, send me a random DVD." One time I got a uh, Goof Troop season four. Another time I got uh, Muppets. Uh, was it Muppets Most Wanted? <laughs> I never even finished watching it. <gasps> I, <laughs> I it's a good one. Is it a good one? Oh yeah, they're always I, good. I need to watch it again, but I mean, it's that Disney era. It was like it was, it's okay. I, mean, I really like the first one, but I, I just couldn't get into that one. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to poke at that and see if mm-hmm. that's worthwhile here before the second. That's there no. Hold on, that's September second. I think I it's I think you get a week, like it's individually, mm-hmm. like you get a week from whenever you sign up. Okay, to, to do, do it. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's so, what I'm, I'm thinking. So this September second is like this person's email. Correct. Oh. It's a screenshot. Ooh. Okay. Mm, magic. All right. So mm. we're we're pretty much there was so pretty much we're all we're all we're all good at Disney Plus here, aren't we? Because it's really just. It, it's kind of like the thing tailored for us in general. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, hey, Mandalorian. No, oh, you like Mandalorian. Mitch. I heard people freaking out about the Phineas and Ferb movie. I'm just like, yeah. I don't even... Really? That's... I mean, I was excited for the Invader Zim movie I watched this week. But, that was uh, really good. That was a real good one. Uh, just like the good old days. And they weren't on TV, so it kind of pushed things a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I started watching it with Missy and I realized that and then I found out uh, she actually slept through it, but she was still laughing at it. So we uh, and I fell asleep and, you know, we only got through the first 15 minutes. So we rewatched the entire first. Yes. Time. Mini Moose. It's worth it. Mini Moose. Mini Moose. I was like, where the hell did the moose come from? I had to go look it up. It mm-hmm. was like this thing that it was from a cut episode, I guess. But Oh, really? Yeah, it was from it, it, the origin was from a cut episode, but it made an appearance in a holiday special they did. So. And there's your Invader Zim uh, trivia. Hey, uh, here's a bad Star Wars story for you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> What's going on with Star Wars Coke bottles? Oh, yeah. One, there's Star Wars Coke bottles? Yes, they're they're round. 
Okay. And their little, oh, little, yeah, they're they're very special. They that you do get them. look like grenades a little bit. Yeah, so TSA is like, yeah, your Coke bottles look like bombs. Um, <laughs> so they're going to start banning them. So initially, I'm looking at these, and they look more like um like Christmas bulbs. Yes, <laughs> they really do. <laughs> and now they just look like grenades. Yeah. So yeah, when you go to Disney at Galaxy's Edge, you get you can get uh, oh. obviously it's like Sprite and Coke and Diet Coke and, and, and Dasani, and the font is all kind of like Star Wars fonted, mm-hmm. like like alien fonted to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, even with a decorative lid removed, lid removed, the bottle will still not be allowed through security. <laughs> Jeez. So so ship it back home if you're picking up any of those special bottles from your Galaxy Edge visit. That oh my gosh! We all planning you that. can't even take them in your carry-on or checked bags. No, jeez. No, they have the official line about replica bomb replicas are not allowed. By the way, in case you didn't know. Oh jeez! Hey, here's a, here's some more bad news. <laughs> Yay! Divorce dispute leads to accusation of crime in space. Space crime. So there's a divorce happening between a uh, I think former astronaut, maybe current, I don't know, and. Uh, a, a, Apparently, the accusation is the person had accessed um, a bank account uh, that they were not they were not able they were not allowed they shouldn't have um, access to private financial records so of your ex spouse or whatever right um, and I believe what was the other thing Tra- basically crimes that led to identity theft because of this mm. and and they may have happened while uh, the person uh, astronaut Anne McLean was on the space station. Which means that she conducted a illegal, um, she broke the law while in space. So this is our first space crime. Yeah, it's not as exciting as it sounds, but <laughs> uh, so so crimes in space is now a thing, and um, it gets murky. It gets murky. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of pe- there's there's probably a good handful of people that are up there, you know. At any any time, so I guess it's kind of inevitable, right? Like, what happens when you get mad in space and 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 have a bad day? What do you do? Go for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go for a space walk. Yeah, go for a space walk. I'm, I'm over my my shipmates. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. To, I guess they kind of did that in that one Chris Pratt movie. But um, anyways, so that was fun. Also. Speaking of space, this one, uh, uh, SpaceX Starhopper successfully completes its uh, 150 meter hover test. Uh, so just kind of a uh, rocket, you know, a, a, a landside rocket test that they were doing. Uh, Dave Ponder is beyond excited for this. By the way, this test will hopefully grow into the Starship and Super Heavy launch vehicles. Uh, these were known as uh, BFR before. So growing in that stuff, I believe those are the ones and correct me in the chat, uh, Dave, but I believe those, the, the ones you mentioned there are the ones that are going to lead to the moon base station that is going to be like kind of the way station for like us going to Mars and things like that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so tell me about, so this is an old article, but we're going to talk about this, Katie, which one, the, uh, the, the porn, porn hub. One no, this is this new. Week? This is this okay. is new. This is new. Oh, okay. So Pornhub has been doing a few. Th- well, okay. So there's there's been a few articles going around. The one that I've seen recently was every um, they put they were planting trees for every hundred minutes you were watching of uh, porn, a particular porn, and that was actually from 2014. Mm. So Pornhub for the last few years has been doing things. They're trying to help the environment. They were oh, remember B porn last year. B porn. Yeah. Where's John Carmen in the B porn? So we were talking about bee porn and that we're supporting the bees. Now they are trying to clean up the dirtiest beach. So they're having, it's called the dirtiest porn ever, is uh, trying to clean up beaches by producing a video in which well-known porn star couple has sex on a littered covered beach. Oh. What? Yep. And in the background, you have Pornhub branded hazmat suits, people in suits cleaning up the rubbish. And uh, they don't, say but each view of the video results in a, a certain amount of a donation to ocean polymers which is a british recycling technology company that sp- specializes in collecting and reprocessing plastic from the ocean and turning it into fuel hmm. so yeah they also talk about uh the issues with single-use plastic tips for sustainability um yeah we're dirty here at Pornhub, but that doesn't mean our beaches need to be and says I, the vice president I'm, I'm pretty sure these these porn hub cares ones are mostly uh safe for work so we'll find out we'll find out as yeah. i play it live on the internet Watch well, it. oh touching the butt <laughs> touching the butt and touching we'll leave the it butt. there it got a little trashy 
No, so they're there. It, it is them. They're they're getting fresh, and there's just litter around them. And there's like, <laughs> it's the sexy walk on the beach, but just on a litter covered beach. <laughs> It looks like it's like it's like it's like a uh, true fire festival vi- festival video. This is interesting. So further down in the article, it's a, they were talking about a recent study by French think tank The Shift Project mm-hmm. measured the carbon emissions associated with watching online videos, Netflix, YouTube, t- pornography, and noted that 1% of global carbon emissions comes from streaming. <laughs> That is true. That's I mean, that is a big issue between yeah. the um, hey, we have electric cars and hey, we're doing all this stuff online, but there's a server somewhere that has to generate the electricity for all this stuff. Then that has to come from somewhere, right? Yeah. So. so the carbon emissions associated with watching that 12 minute video clip would um, are about the same as driving for a half a mile. <laughs> That's scary. So yeah, that's super. We're that's, all gonna that's, die. That's super scary considering <laughs> how much video processing I do. <laughs> you are destroying single handedly. How much? How many videos do I send to YouTube to process every week? Single handedly. <laughs> this video got a thousand views. That's like a jet taking off. Jeez. That's... All right. Uh, let's see what else is there for us to touch on here. <laughs> Wrong coin of words after a Pornhub story. Yeah, touch the button. Truckla. This is not yeah. new. This is not brand brand. This is relatively new. Uh, actually, uh, at Abstractions, they had a really good speaker, Simone Gertz. Um, she makes shitty robots. Oh, cool. Is 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 kind of the, the her YouTube channel, and she's actually done work with Myth, MythBusters and and got the they got to do stuff in the garage. She's worked with uh, Weta um, and everything. But I, I I thought this one was of interest uh, to people on this show. She made she she was she was pressuring. She wants a truck. And Tesla doesn't have a truck, so she made one. So she went and uh, took her Tesla Model 3 and modified it and made a truck out of it. There it is right there. And then they made a classic truck commercial with all the, you know, all the standard truck commercial things. She's welding. She's driving through the grass, but it's still a Model 3. So (laughs) she's doing donuts in the grass. (laughs) Uh, and uh, she said mostly the, the, the biggest issue was making it waterproof terrain a little bit because it's really just kind of opened up the car uh, and it's got a little bit of a track on it and everything. Um, she's um she's a, like like Swedish or something, mm-hmm. so it's even more hilarious that she's like dressed as a cowboy. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Doing like those pure America things. So uh, I thought that was fun. Uh, you know, one of those kind of maker projects that 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 took her about a month to do. I uh, said so she said the next thing she's gonna do because she had to get enough of this done so they could do the commercial. Uh, she needs to raise it because when they did all those off road scenes, um, they weren't. Uh, you know, she was kind of crying inside because she could hear all the scraping. Because it's it's <laughs> not made for off road. It's a freaking Model <laughs> Three, right? So, but go check out her station again. It's uh, Simone Gertz up there, and uh, it, it it's again like she's been on the. Uh, 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 I can't remember his name. The guy uh, Colbert, and, and you know, showing some of the uh, robots and everything. And she's got a fun YouTube channel where she just makes crazy stuff. Um, robots that try to feed her soup and then pour it on her Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) things like that so it's a nice cool uh maker uh thing and and it was it was she gave a really good talk about if you endeavor to make shitty things then you can't fail (laughs) (laughs) so that was a fun one and i and we recorded all that stuff again um so stay tuned look uh follow the abstractions con on um social media i don't know what their plan is for all that media um right now uh but they have it and they should be doing something with it and there's several really good talks between that and um and again i'm blanking on the rest of the speakers it was a long it was a long three or four days with them there's a lot of information a lot of it was about coding so it's just kind of jellied my brain that's why i just went and watched dumb movies every night and yes. found goats uh, so uh tell me about lg's fancy ice balls yes so if you like fancy ice balls for your cocktails lg has a refrigerator for you <laughs> It only costs like forty four hundred dollars. Jeez, it's a, who's spending forty four hundred dollars for a fridge? It's very. <laughs> I'll take two. I'll take two. He says. Ronnie starts here for the next show. Yes, it's very very fancy. Um, the <laughs> instead of uh, getting your own ice ball mold and making your own 
fancy ice balls. Uh, you can just have your refrigerator do it. So nice. Mm. This is this is ridiculous. This is so funny. But yeah, yeah, it's it's the door in. It's got the interwebs. You can do you can tweet from your refrigerator. Like th- I think that that one teen had lost their phone privileges and she was tweeting from her refrigerator at one point. <laughs> there was an article about that. So you could do that yourself. Wow, I love I love the uh, the sub headline here on uh, the Verge is uh, you had me at slow melting. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Slow melting <laughs> ice balls. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what do you look for? In a, what do you look for in a fridge, Katie? <laughs> keeps my pizza cold. <laughs> slice on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. For those leftover slice on, on Broadway. Broadways, you need a forty-four hundred dollar fridge from. LG. I mean, if you watch the video, it's pretty cool because it does make a whole drawer of those ice balls that pe- fancy people use for their drinks. <laughs> you know, fancy people. Fancy people that can afford a forty-four hundred dollar fridge. Yeah. In their circle ice. Oh, jeez. Hey, well, uh, while we don't have a fancy fridge, we still do some fancy things over here at Sidekick Media Services. I almost said Slice on Media Services. I almost, we just almost made a new company. Uh, let us be the sidekick in your superhero project from sporting events, music video production to conferences and everywhere in between. The team here at Sidekick Media Services, myself, producer Missy, Katie as well. I do things. She does things. Uh, as you covered, as a psychic to your superhero project, what next big thing can we help you with? You can go find out more. Check out some samples of our work over at psychicmediaservices.com. Uh, so, hey, it's Wednesday, so I don't know. You guys may get this. You may hear you know, what's coming up, but we also will have uh, Pittsburgh Current Podcast, of course. Uh, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. And if you go over to SorgatronMedia.com, we just updated all of our network podcasts are updated over there, uh, getting into those back up and uh, running as well. So we have a lot of content. Our friends Bardic Mystery Tour, Thrifty Podcast, uh, Bold Sports Pittsburgh, and uh, and Comic Book Pit uh, doing a lot of stuff, plus a lot of our shows that come out of here uh, as well. So, uh, Katie, anything in the plug? Anything? Anything? Other than just following, ba- uh, what was it? Scarehouse Basement, Basement PGH, Basement PGH, PGH, PGH on everywhere. Instagram. Yeah, use I, 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 you know, see see um, Katie grunging. Yes, you can see me. <laughs> you see me doing all of this. It's that grunging season. It's grunge season. My hands are still brownish. In my mind, you're playing Nirvana and just Seattle uh, uh, indie music. You know, '90s indie as you grunge up the yes. uh, the Scarehouse. I'm sorry. I'm watching this video. I'm going to share it with you. Um, a wrestler shared this video. It's real life. Um, order. I just lost it. Oh, I can't share it. If I don't find it anymore, it's gone. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> and it's hilarious how well done this is. I'm going to find it for you and share it. And you can enjoy it. But yes, that's what I was staring at. On my- <laughs> I was like, what is this? This is amazing. Awesome. Go go check out when she's come out of her video. Yeah, hearing. I'm done. Kate Utter's on the Twitter. Yep, Kate Utter's, Kate Marie PGH on the Instagram stuff. Check out everything SorgatronMedia.com, Sorgatron on the tweets if you want to get at me over there. And of course, we got a lot of stuff going on. I I, I feel like I feel weird not, not plugging Chilla and Chilla Tech. I know. That. It's just a rare instance where he's not on the show. Ryan Starks, where can I find you? Uh, at Starks Wrestling. That makes me feel better. I just plug something else. Uh, <laughs> but book Ronnie Starks for your uh, tech conferences yes. and speaking engagements. And your haunted house. <laughs> and your all your house, things. Apparently. Do so, all your things. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you, everybody. That dropped in the chat room on this weird Wednesday night recording that we had for the show. We'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.